All right, hello everyone. So I'm making this because it's based on the title, which is a long-term living. I realized that a lot of the videos that I made in the past, a lot of the things that I've recorded, a lot of the stuff that I've come across with is very short-term thinking. Three, four, five-minute videos, sure. You know, some people have horrible attention spans. They can't watch anything past 20 minutes, but that's why I'm here right now. Because the principles I'm about to lay out in this video are the reason I've taken maybe a month or two off of making videos here on this channel and really thought about what is it that I want to provide. I don't want to think about story structure. I don't want to think about, oh, how can I effectively convey this? It's more like, here's wisdom that I can listen to at any point in my life so that it can come across to anyone and could possibly help them change their lives. And that's kind of the thing I wanted to talk about first, which is the longer the time frame you think on, the more wiser you will be seen as. And that doesn't mean you start thinking on a long term just to be seen as wise, but it has other benefits. This video is for long term thinking. I don't like short things anymore, things that don't transcend generations. They might be thinking, how is this video going to transcend generations? It's going to get buried under the trillions that are going to be uploaded soon. Sure. But there's a point where you have to understand that generations versus centennial is different. So throughout this entire thing, I'm going to be talking about different periods of time frame. So think about one year versus five years versus 10 years versus 30 versus 80 years versus 500. That's a huge jump right there, right? <laughs> but the idea is there's kind of a split between where you want to go and how you're going to get there. And the longer you think out, the more you think on principles. And if you think even farther than that, you won't think about anything at all. Think about this. If you thought 500 years from now, where are you going to be? Well, you're probably going to be dead, right? You're probably going to be under the ground, depending on religion. But if you want to be you know, living a good life, you should probably think on an 80 year time scale. If you want to change the world, think on a 500 year time scale. It was something like the Native American tribes who said, we won't make a decision unless it transcends six generations in front of us, something along those lines. And I believe they were one of the longest standing nations until Columbus came and <laughs> dead, killed them. <laughs> so there's a difference between all the things I'm going to talk about between next year, 5 years, 10 years, 30, 80, or 500, right? 80, I say, because it's the average lifespan for human. But I'm going to call it centennial, you know, around 200. So how exactly does thinking on a longer time scale make you seem more wiser? Well, think about it like this. Our bodies, our biological bodies, the unconscious thinks on a longer time scale than our conscious does. Our unconscious wants to have kids. They want to get on to the next generation, pass on our genes, see for worthy of it. But we are worrying about the next snack that comes out of the fridge. Not a lot of people worry about their goals. Not a lot of people worry about where they're going. So a lot of them surrender to that biological self because they think they feel right. If you feel right, you'll listen to your feelings. Your feelings are your unconscious biological self. What does your biological self want and how can it help itself? That is what your body is always doing. That is what you are doing. You're trying to resort to that biological self all the time. And that means that you see it as wiser. It's someone that's good to go to. You trust your intuition. You say, I feel like this is right. You're trusting your body's intuition. You aren't really doing anything else. So we've kind of become slaves to our bodies. But there's a way to break out of this. And again, that things... It comes back to this idea of if you want to change the world, think on a generational time scale. But if you want to live a good life, think on a centennial time scale. So let me explain if you want to change the world, because this is something I truly want to do. And I think it is genuinely possible for a lot of people as well. So when you think about generational, people usually add a word onto the end. Wealth, generational wealth. What is generational wealth? Because a lot of studies have shown that after just two generations, the money is gone. Who was the richest man in 1950? What was it? Andrew Carnegie? He was worth 
in today's dollars around i think 100 billion 300 billion where is carnegie's family i don't know about any carnegie that is a billionaire wealth does not transcend generations if you're thinking on a 500 year time scale money does not matter that's why the people who invent things today they have no care for money at all think about elon musk he does not care about getting rich he may have when he was in college but at the time, all he cared about, he wanted to make a product that can transcend generations. That's what he did. Think about Steve Jobs. I doubt he cared about money. As you can see them just throwing it around, just having fun with it. Even though they do a bunch to protect it, all that, right? Because you kind of have to. It's their stock, which, you know, I'll explain in another video about financials. But generally, if you want to change the world, create that which is generational. So you don't need to worry about wealth. You don't need to worry about your name. You don't need to worry about the house you have, the clothes you have on, any of that. But this does not mean to be a monk. This does not mean to live a horrible life. You still need to get across and actually get good stuff in your life, right? You live it. You're the only one who's making it. No one else can replace that. So, you know, think about it like this, right? You got fire. Fire is used to this day. How long ago was fire discovered? Probably millions of years maybe 500,000, however long humans were alive. Fire is still used to this day. Language is still used to this day. And the new fire is technology. The new fire is being able to use a computer, making a computer. Who made the computer? I don't know, someone made it, but that person was not thinking about money. They were thinking about generations ahead. And now all the future people think about, all the people want to go into technology because they know it's the future. The guy who invented it never thought about the money. He thought about 500 years from now. Will this still be used? And the answer is yes. And you, you kind of have to find out what this generational thing is for you. Because a lot of people won't be able to think on this generational timeline. So if you are someone who's trying to change the world in some way, it does not mean you have to go and invent a new fire. right? You could go and make a difference but it doesn't have to be directly proportional to the entire world. A lot of people, sadly, may not be able to do that. Even though they might believe they can, but it would take their entire lifetime, which a lot of people just want to enjoy, to get to that point. A lot of people who are successful now started when they were 20, when they were 18. I could start that. But the logical question is, do I want to start that? Because these people, you hear them talking, they say, I worked 100 hours a week, I worked 120 hours a week, I don't even know how that's possible. And they're not living the most amazing lives. But they thought on a very long time scale. I may not be at that point now. I don't think I can think as long as they do. I can think close to them. Actually, I probably can think, but I can't act on that time scale. I know for a fact but I can act close to them. I can get rich enough. I can get happy enough. And that is the point. And that takes me to my next idea, which is if you want to live a good life, create that which is centennial. So the way this kind of ties in together is if you want to change the world, think of that which is generational. If you want to live a good life, think of that which is centennial. You see how this kind of ties in? It's like, it's a nice quote. I'm gonna quote myself on that. It sounds cool. <laughs> So if you want to live a good life, all you really need, get rich, get happy. That's really it. That's all you need to get to live a good life. Get rich, get happy. After that, you can think about changing the world. But the thing is, getting rich, sure, does take a bit of time. Getting happy also is a skill that you developed. I'm taking all of this from Naval, by the way. Naval has a lot of uh, deep thoughts that are kind of have to sit there with them, be like, okay, how can I take this apart and how can I digest it so that it's easy to understand? When he says get rich, get happy, he's still thinking on a long time scale, right? But the problem is there's a certain, you can kind of think of it like a spectrum. So if you're all the way up here, you're thinking like the guy who invented fire, right? That's like, I don't even know. He probably found it on accident, right? But whoever's thinking really, really long term, they're up here. They usually have to sacrifice their entire life to achieve that. But as you go down the spectrum, you know, it starts dropping a bit. So, you know, maybe a little bit lower than that. It was a guy who thought of computers. He was like, oh, let me dedicate some of my life to computers, right? 
so he didn't dedicate his entire let's say he lived 80 years didn't dedicate his entire 80 years to it maybe he dedicated 40 to it right a little bit more manageable go down go down from that now you're at about maybe let's say you're thinking 200 years ahead you're like okay let me get or maybe not even 200 let's say 150 years okay let me get rich so that my kids and my kids my kids and my kids kids could have a bit of money okay that's true they will have a bit of money they might not know how to use it but they will have it and if you drop down till about 80 years which is your lifespan you just want to get rich you just want to get happy generational wealth is real but it's not very useful right you don't need to spend all that time making money because it's only going to affect your kids as kids and if you're thinking about your name right oh your name your legacy is going to be passed down it will not do you remember your grandfather's grandfather's grandfather if you are of asian descent or if you are of any kind of you know from the south asian part your grandfather's grandfather's grandfather is probably genghis khan he created a legacy sure but think 500 years from now is anyone gonna remember him myself but we remember the sumerians and we remember the uh, greeks do you know the name of a single greek maybe a philosopher but their names barely last you just summarize their entire existence within this idea the greeks I think a thousand years from now americans you're american <laughs> you're canadian your entire existence is summed up in that word american canadian sumerian egyptian all of these words it doesn't really mean much your legacy will never matter no one's gonna remember you that's a very important point whether you're thinking on an 80 year time scale or on a 500 year one so let's say you genuinely want to change the world or you know just do something that lasts maybe your kids life right or just something that makes you happy like within the next 80 100 years if you want to do something like that you need to understand that most of your work will be wasted. Now, what do I mean by this? Let's say you work towards trying to, let's say you're trying to invent the computer, right? If you put all of your time into making this computer, what you're doing is you're coding, you're putting together components, you're putting together all this stuff. And at some point you hit it. You actually make the computer. You change the entire world. Everyone uses your product and you're getting stupid rich cool happens right sometimes it happens unavoidable oops got rich control the world but let's say that you kind of got there on your first try you just threw together some parts and oh cheers a little bit of code i don't know i just made it i thought it might work got rich what's the difference between the person who's been trying for 40 years and the person who did it literally on the next day you could say they're smarter you could say they got lucky or maybe just most of their effort was wasted. Wasted is a bit of a harsh word, but it makes sense in this scenario. Let's think about the physical domain, right? If you're trying to build muscle, a lot of it is volume. There's no way to cut it down to, oh yeah, let's do one set a week, let's make muscle. Not possible. It's absolutely impossible. Unless technology assists, which is different, but at this point, naturally, it's impossible. But let's say you wanted to get rich right computer example if you strike upon the right thing in every scenario you'll do good think about this in terms of youtube if you make the right video with the right stories with the right hook with the right thumbnail it will go viral it could be your first video it could be your 200th video it could be your thousandth video right it doesn't matter the point is most of that effort will be wasted you could say it's invested you could say it got you to that point gave you knowledge sure and I would rather take that path where I get the knowledge. But most of it does not matter. In the physical domain, however, consistency is king. If you're trying to build muscle, if you're trying to get somewhere, you should probably just stick to what you want to do. And this kind of takes me to what I want to talk about because in the intellectual domain, so I'm talking like most work today, software engineering, coding, media, anything with recording, anything with podcasts, all of that stuff, is based on a power rule and it's similar to learning when you 
read 10 pages of a book, you're not going to get 10 pages of knowledge. You're going to get 10 to the power of three pages of knowledge. You might be wondering, how is that? Let's say you are 10 years old. You read this book from an 80 year old. He gives life lessons. He's telling you, okay, here's what I did. Here's what happened, all that stuff, right? What you're doing is you're taking this person's brain quite literally and putting it in yours. Uh, that sounds kind of stupid, right? Like, how are you taking this guy's brain? He's taking his thoughts and putting it on paper as a medium for you to read. You're taking those thoughts and putting it into your mind. Now you can think like the 80 year old if you consume enough of it. It's the same with reading. If you read enough books from rich people, it's, it's just stupid to believe you won't be rich. And that's another way if you're thinking about getting rich, right? Naval says this, and some guy named Alex Ramosi. You want to get rich, put in enough effort that it's, 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 unbelievable, it's unbelievable to believe you're not rich yet. So for example, I take a business, I work on it for six months, like, okay, I'm not rich. Like, okay, that makes sense. You only worked on your business six months. Okay, you worked on your business two years. Okay, maybe you should be seeing at least a little bit of success now, right? If you've been working on your business for 15 years, you're like, oh, damn, you should probably be making quite a bit of money compared to before. It's just obvious. Think like that. If you put in enough work, enough time, at some point, it will do good. It's the same with the mental domain. The mental domain, the intellectual domain, follows the power rule. It all adds up exponentially. Read 10 pages, uh, 100 pages worth of knowledge. 10 more pages, 100 more. Right, And it just keeps on adding up. It's like an like exponential graph. Have you ever seen those? One event could change everything. That one discovery of the computer could change your entire life, your entire wealth, your just everything. But when it comes to making muscle, it's all about going there, putting in the work, going home. But that's the hard part there. Let's say you did want to get muscle, right? You did want to do well in the physical domain. The problem is, that people try to follow routines. People try to follow, oh, let me follow this as much as I can. Let me try to make this something that um, I can optimize fully, optimize. I have a club in school. Uh, me, my friends run it, me, Cam, PJ, a few other friends, Sid. And it's called optimize, right? It's like, how can you make the best of what you have right now and get the most out of it? Pretty much, that's the idea. But now that I think about it, optimizing in a way is wasteful. I really do think it is. Because at some point, what you're doing is accounting for the non-leveraged activities. So if you read The Black Swan, the idea is that no amount of white spawns can disprove that there is not an existence of a black swan. So if you go out and you see a bunch of white swans, that doesn't mean there's no black swan. If you go out, you see a white cow. That doesn't mean there's not a purple cow somewhere. There might be. You just haven't seen it yet. There's no documented evidence yet. And that's a lot of issues that come up today. That's how most of the issues today are just you haven't seen it happen, so you can't believe it. So uh, when you optimize something, what you're doing is try to make the best of that perfect scenario. So think about it like this. If you do a single question over and over and over and over and you have a test tomorrow, Sure, you might be really good at that one question, but you're not gonna do good on the test. You've only done well on one question. It's similar here. If you optimize for only one scenario, for only one routine, for only one thing which you need to follow every single day, at some point, you will have to deviate. You might say, oh, all my variables are perfect. You know, uh, I get up at 6.30, at 6.45, I'm brushing my teeth, right? Sure, some things will stay the same. But if you throw yourself even a little bit off, your entire day will be shaken. Let's say there's a bit of traffic on the way back home from work, but you expect to get home from work at five. And you know, at 5.10, you gotta start eating, right? But no, you got home at 5.30. But now you gotta start doing your work, but you still gotta eat. And up to, oh, this is all, it all messes up, right? Optimizing is not useful in the long term. Again, this entire video is about long-term thinking. Sure, if you want to do well in the short term, if you're an athlete, if you're trying to achieve something huge like a bodybuilding competition, go ahead, right? Go ahead, optimize because you know you can control the variables. But on a long time scale, routines are not effective. Routines will never do well. 
but consistency will do well. Consistency does not equal routines. This is why I've started to play when I work out. This is why I start to play when I work. Because it's no longer about show up, do the hard work, discipline. Because discipline will not last forever. No man is disciplined until the age of 80. If you rely on discipline alone, there will be a day until that you run out that you won't be able to go there. And then you'd have to rely on trying to build the habit. How do you build the habit? Well, in Atomic Habits, James Clear talks about just going there and starting it, the two minute rule. So if you're trying to build a habit of exercising, all you have to do is put on your shoes, step outside. That's it, your exercise. Like that's your exercise for the day. That's play. Literally, just step outside. Yeah, you can walk. I don't know, go climb some trees, whatever you want to do. It's exercise. The point is establishing the habits, not in a routine fashion, but in a way where it stays consistent for the rest of your life. Because most of the games you play that are beneficial are infinite games. Infinite games are games that never end. They don't have rules. There's something you can continue on forever and ever. So if you think about working out, a lot of people fizzle out by the age of 25 or even 30 or 35 because they have other responsibilities. No, they just couldn't put in the same amount of effort that they were expecting from before, which made them feel like they're in a rut, they're not making progress because before every single variable was optimized. Optimized, right? But now they have kids or you know they're trying to work harder or their bodies give up on them or they got injured and they're just not able to do what they were before. They get demoralized. They stop exercising. If you think on a lifetime long time scale, then you, you'll you just want to be healthy. Sure, you could have muscle, right? You could always maintain muscle. That's good. If you want to look good, sure. Like it, it makes you happy. It does make a lot of people happy if they look good. That is something you should keep. But optimizing your routine to work hard for a short period of time almost never works. Again, unless unless you are in a competition, there's no point of doing it. And this is why competitions are really rough. I don't think they're too great because I've always thought on a longer time scale. If you're competing against someone, there's an end point. There's a finish line. There's a point you reach which ends. But when you say work out, you exercise, what is the end point? Is there any end point? There's nearly none. The point is to not reach a certain body fat percentage or to reach a certain weight percentage. It's to just get the habit of working out. It's the same with eating. It's not, uh, oh, let me go on the strict diet for f six months to try and get the best out of it. If you like doing that, sure, go ahead, right? If you want to do it. But if you want to keep working out forever and ever, if you want to eat healthy forever and ever, the point is habits. It's no longer about Oh, let me optimize this the best I can. Um, let me let me get the most out of this. No, it's about just doing it. Play. Have fun with it. When I go to the gym, I don't follow this strong, hard routine. You know, let me uh, lift full capacity RPE 10 every day. Because I know there will be a day. I know for a fact there will be a day that I won't feel like working out simply because it's so hard. And then it's an exponential decline. Because then it's just... Oh, I don't feel like working out, and oh, it's so hard. I, 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 I'm going to be worse than my previous self. I feel like I'm getting complacent. And it's just a negative cycle that repeats itself. This is kind of what's happened to me recently. Um, I was all about optimizing variables. I was all about, you know, let me control every single number, everything in my day so that I can make it so that I get the most results compared to everyone. And sure, it worked for like four months. And then school got a little bit harder. One variable changed out of my entire day and everything was thrown off. I had to study a bit longer, which meant it was cutting into my eating time, which meant I couldn't work out as hard, which meant that I had to sleep a little bit later. And all of a sudden, two months later, I wonder, why am I sleeping at 12, p 12 a.m. every day? I wonder, why am I not able to focus on my work? I wonder, why do I not feel like working out? Because I've optimized every variable for that perfect scenario. The ex The... The solution to this was play. Play. Now, I wanted to get back into that habit of working out. 
of doing exercise. So I just went there. Literally, I, I tracked my workouts down to the numbers. I'm like, okay, eight out of 10, that's how I felt today. Okay, here's, here's the numbers. Here's how much I improved from last time. Okay, 10% greater, cool. This time I'll do 10% more. This time around, and this, this happened about a month ago, by the way, so it's pretty recent. I went to the gym. I picked up a weight. I'm like, all right. <laughs> I just started lifting. Just anything. I'm like, okay, maybe I, I like bicep curls. And then I did it until I felt like, oh, you know, let me try a shoulder press. You know, I haven't done that in a while. Did shoulder press. I even did this machine that works like your hip abductors. I don't even know. It was fun. <laughs> I like doing it. And over time, I got back into this consistency of, okay, now I like working out again because I'm playing, because I'm having fun. And then I kind of based it around that fun because I know I'm going to be doing this for life. This is why I said the longer the time frame you think on, the wiser you're seen as because you have the ability to control nearly every part of your life. You know it's not about the short-term events. And you know it's not about what happens in the next year or in the next six months or the next three months, one month. It's about if I do this for 70 years, how can I make it so that I'm still doing it at the end of that? Same with work. For work examples, I only want to work on what I want to do. And this kind of takes me to the next point, which is you don't need a break from it if you want to do it. And a lot of people say, you know, follow, follow what you like, follow what you feel like is good. Follow your passion, right? People confuse passion with feelings. Passion does not mean you do what you feel like doing or else you'll never make money. You'll never be specialized. You'll never do what you want to. Humans get bored very quickly, especially in the age of diminishing uh, attention spans, right? You see that happening now. Attention spans are just horrible, trash. But that doesn't mean you don't have, that doesn't mean you have to stop doing what you want to do. A lot of people have kind of hidden this under their persona that they've developed over their teenage years. You know, they've gone to school, they've gotten meaning from school, from education, so that's what they continue to do. They join the fields that make the most money, which is why there's so many software engineers today. And the problem is the mass of humans don't understand how uh, humanary inflation works. And this is what happened to IT back in the 2000s. They had a bunch of people just flocked into IT. Uh, they're like, oh, IT makes money, right? Call center, all that, right? But, you know, call center. I hear that word now, we're like, oh, minimum wage. Yeah. <laughs> no one does it anymore. No one does call center work anymore. But back then, it was making 80, 90, 100, $120,000 per year. People wanted to make that money. Then all the Indians came and then it got worse. Actually, you see AI now, right? AI just stands for anonymous Indian. <laughs> There's some Indian coding in his dark bedroom. He hasn't gone outside for seven months. He's just, oh, let me let me create this new model which has the better potential to change the individual's lives. And, um, you know, he does do it, right? Cool. Uh, again, he thought on a really long time frame. That's why the Indian is probably getting rich, right? Indians are pretty rich. Asians are pretty rich. Even the Chinese are pretty rich. But what kind of life is he living? You want to be that hermit, right? I'm tying in all the points together. So he thought in a pretty long time, so he was like, okay, but let me sacrifice now for tomorrow. It's a pretty basic delayed gratification idea. You see how he's living, though. A pretty hermit life, um, routine, discipline, all that, right? But yeah, uh, going back to that, he followed his passion, not his feelings. Or maybe he did follow his feelings, right? He just wanted to get rich. So he's like, okay, let me try to do what's going to make me rich now. Let me go into software engineering. Let me do what my parents told me. Doctor, lawyer, engineer. That's the most said in the <laughs> Asian community because that's where most of them are, right? And the problem is if you have so many of them that are very smart, all you're doing is competing against people who just keep on getting younger every year, right? There's just new younger people who want to work harder and want to work better at it. And then you're worthless. You may have experience, sure, you may have all that, but when you follow your feelings of, okay, I want to do it because I want to get rich, you never do it for being happy, even though you're delaying your gratification, sure. 
delaying gratification, you still have to get the gratification at the end. Is the gratification money? Up to you. But most of the time, from a lot of people, they've said money does not matter. Again, if you think on a long enough time scale, generational wealth does not matter. You're not taking the money to the grave with you. Instead, two generations from now, your kids will take it to the grave with them. <laughs> so, you know, you, you, you need to follow your passion, not your feelings. That means when you do it, it doesn't feel like work. It's like, for example, I really love physics. Like, I, you know, I'm in school right now. And I have to take physics, and it's something I actually like to take. When I'm doing physics problem, when I'm doing the practice problems, right? It doesn't feel like work. It just feels like, oh, I'm solving another one of these problems. It's fun. I solve the problem, I'm done. But then, like, I have statistics. I'm like, oh, man, I have to calculate another probability. Like, I put it into chat GPT. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to calculate the probability of you picking another red ball, bro. I just, I'm done with that. But yeah, physics, even though it's the same problem, even though it's in a different scenario, it's still something I like to do. That is passion. It's not a feeling. It's something that you do it and you feel like this is not work, even though to others it feels like work. It feels like play to you. Some people find there's joy in working out, right? A lot of people find working out as a burden. They find it, oh man, I gotta work out today. I gotta exercise. I gotta be fit. Some people like me just go there and they have fun, they play. Now that doesn't mean you have to turn it into your career, right? But if I did, I know I'd do it better than most people because I really want to do it. And this is kind of the dilemma, right? When people start working out, when people think about discipline, they think, oh, I have to do this, I have to be disciplined, I have to get it done. But how are you competing against a guy who really wants to do it? You're both going to work 80 hours a week he does it because he wants to you're doing it because you feel like you have to because you want to get rich he's not doing it for that and the thing is because he's doing it because he wants to he's gonna work even harder even longer than you he loves solving the problems he gets a constant feedback loop of you know i solve the problem yay dopamine and then his brain tells him oh solve another problem do it better do it harder solves another problem a harder problem he goes on over and over because he loves to do it Meanwhile, you're kind of struggling to even get the motivation to start the work. That probably means, one, you're expecting results too early, or two, you don't really want to do it. And there's no end to work. There's no end to exercise. Everyone's looking for this one day of retirement, but retirement, in a lot of ways, is a myth. No one saves anymore. No one saves money. No one is ready to retire. Pensions are gone. They have been replaced with 401ks, which is a self-serving, self-serving saving plan, which no one invests into. So it's just turned into a, I don't even know what to say to that because it's just, there's no end to work. Everyone's looking for retirement a day. They can take off and just go somewhere, go travel. Why don't you just do it now? If you really want to travel, you'll do it, and then you realize it's not what you want. It was not what you're looking for. That's why a lot of people, when they get rich, they realize it's not what they were looking for. They just wanted freedom. They wanted freedom from their problems. They wanted freedom of thinking every moment, what if I don't get rich? They wanted that freedom. And a lot of people make these very expensive mistakes. Expensive not in the wealth way, but also, yeah, in the wealth way. <laughs> if I work 80 hours a week towards something, you also work 80 hours a week towards something, but my thing is more leveraged, which means it's worth more, I will make more money in the end. So think about this. This guy named Tim and this guy named, named um, let's call him George, they both start a business, right? They both work on the exact same business for the exact same time with the exact same amount of effort for 10 years. Except, here's the twist. Tim is actually Tim Cook. Tim has been working on Apple, a company in technology, something that actually matters. He's thinking on a big time scale. George has opened your locally gr local grocery store. They're both working the same 80 hours per week. But why is Tim worth a few billion dollars but George barely makes enough to get by. 
It's because Tim thought bigger. That's really it. Tim said, I'm going to work the same amount of time as George's, but I get to choose how much I want to put in. I get to choose what I'm working towards. So George, on a daily basis, feels worse working for what he's doing. He's like, oh yeah, maybe I'll make 50K, maybe 100K, all that. Tim's like, I will be a billionaire. I can change the world. I have control over the world's supply of phones. And that's what happened. My 80 hours and your 80 hours are not the same because I put it into greater leverage activities that output me more. Your goals need to be higher. You need to think harder. And again, goals are very short term, right? If you're trying to do it forever, you don't need goals. You need systems to improve the way you do things. That doesn't mean optimizing. You need to find a way to make it so that you can think long term, still set goals, but it's not something that becomes routine. Routine is a big killer of man. Because once you fall into it, you don't find any way to innovate or find your passion or find what you actually want to do. You're living this level of dreadful acceptance. And most people live like this, sadly. They have to deal with an income because they've been doing it for the last 10 years or five years. They don't want to go back down that hill, that mountain they've climbed so far to already and try something new. It is never late. If you want to remember this, think you will die in the next 50 years, in the next 100 years. Think on a generational time scale. You will die. You won't have the chance to live this life again. You won't have the chance to go back and be like, oh, I wish I did this. Because some of the most common things I've heard from people I've talked about, um, old people, they say they regret not doing what they wanted to, not taking more risks. All of them, their general idea is that. When I see them, I feel so sad because I'm like, I don't want to end up in that space. A lot of the time it happens because people listen to their parents. They think, oh, they, they know the best for me. But then the parents reach old age and they realize that, oh, I wish I took more risks. I wish I got more done. Um, yeah, it's hard to see older gentlemen struggle with that. They had to live this dreadful existence where they just accepted where they're at. And now they live on pensions. And they're sick because they worked most of the day. They could barely provide for their family. The longer term you think in almost anything the greater that will do you work something with the passion you will get more done than the guy who has to use discipline if you work out to play you will stay fit for the rest of your life if you work to play and your work feels like play and you just pull up there and just play you're going to get richer than everyone else you get to choose if you want to think long term or think short term, how long are your goals? Are you thinking based on what your body wants, what your biological desire wants, or what you want? If you just want to be happy, think for the next 100 years. If you want to change the world, think for the next 500 years. The next 100 years, get rich, get happy. For the next 500 years, change the world. Go. Go do it. Because for anyone, it is absolutely possible.